Think for yourself. Question authority. What's up guys, welcome back. This is another in-depth technical discussion of information that is confirmed. So if you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and keep a lookout for more of these in the future. Also, a thank you to all of you who came out to watch the full playthrough of Resident Evil 4 HD project a couple days ago. It's already got over a thousand views and for a 9.5 hour upload, that's pretty good for a straight gameplay video. But the game is fantastic and that mod definitely represents it amazingly well giving it a fresh coat of paint with remade and upgraded textures and lighting. So check that out when you get a chance. So for today's video, we'll be covering in depth the PCIe functionality of the new SOC chip Nintendo is basically confirmed to have been working on in conjunction with implementing software drivers for this new modern embedded SOC when I covered it back in the summer of 2018 for a new Switch console. And remember, these features and functionality that Nintendo have been working on since that time have highlighted various functions that the current Switch hardware does not have or use, such as prototyping new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology, 3D spatial audio, multi-threading, asynchronous compute, OS emulation with virtual drivers, and writing new PCIe drivers. So obviously this combined with reports from Sharp also working with Nintendo to provide their EXO screens and the various reports since 2018 to 2019 of this year from the Wall Street Journal of an upgraded Switch coming. All these things Nintendo was working on are in perfect parallel with these reports of this new hardware coming to be announced soon. So one of the most important aspects of why PCIe functionality is so important here is due to how the new PCIe protocols function and how they are being implemented directly into new APUs or SOCs in the market since 2017 or so. So first of all, to understand how this all benefits us is to clear up some misconceptions about PCIe that some may have. PCIe stands for a Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. So devices, computers, or consoles that support PCIe internally allow for multiple pieces of hardware to be connected together with the goal of having each piece of hardware, such as a graphics card, NAND memory, USB port, Wi-Fi adapter, or sound card, for example, to be able to output at its maximum speed bandwidth. Now, as you can imagine, as time has progressed, each component in new devices has continued to increase in speed at an extremely rapid rate over the last few years. So PCIe, in turn, has been upgraded from PCIe 3.0 to PCIe 4.0, which increases the amount of lanes and speed per lane available to be used for these multiple adapters on the system to be used at their fullest potential. If you are trying to use a Generation 1 PCIe system with a very limited amount of lanes and bandwidth per lane with brand new components, your system will run a lot slower than what is actually possible or it may not even run at all in certain circumstances. The easiest analogy I could use would be thinking about it like a freeway. As the city grows over the years, more lanes are added and roads are widened out so more cars can fit through, causing less bottlenecks and traffic which slows not just a few cars down but all of them down at the same time, no doubt. And the same applies to modern technology. In order to run these new technologies at the fastest rate possible, you need something to support those new technologies without running out of room for them to operate. Now another thing to make clear is that Peripheral Component Interconnect Express only applies to connecting all these peripherals together. It does not apply to how the components are connected on a motherboard chipset especially a custom one. Now, I know when most people think of PCIe, they picture a big graphics card that you need to plug into a motherboard's PCIe slot. So, what you are seeing here is a GTX 1080 Ti GPU, which is the same GPU that I currently have on my PC. Now, the gold connectors there at the bottom of the graphics card connect to the PCIe slots in the motherboard. Now, the reason they are designed in this way is for interchangeability and upgrading of components. In fact, all external adapters that you want to add internally to a computer's motherboard usually all use those gold connectors to connect to a PCI slot. Unless, of course, you are installing something like a water cooler or a fan. This, in turn, is why you see many different types of motherboards 
and some motherboards aren't designed to support all types of PCIe compatible components and also some motherboards don't support the new PCIe 4.0 yet. So one thing I've seen some people get confused on with PCIe is separating what PCIe is from a PCIe slot or PCIe connector from a device. Now remember, PCIe only stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. It has nothing to do with how the actual device needs to be connected. How PCIe works as far as the technology is concerned is completely different from how it's simply connected together physically. In fact, there's a lot of information about how PCI Express works online. If you want to look it up, you can. There's plenty of technical discussions and tutorials about how the actual technology of it works with how all the lanes work together and how each one of the lanes can output data differently or exactly the same depending on the type of configuration and of course the devices that are connected to use PCI Express. But you may not be aware of this but PCIe has been getting used on integrated embedded chips for years now. Connecting internally for example on an APU or SOC's graphics and RAM together using only PCIe technology as highlighted here from AMD's own Bristol Ridge APUs with PCIe 3.0 integration. So for this new switch Nintendo has been working with new drivers on for many months now, it makes logical sense after examining the fine details of how this works that what Nintendo is using new PCIe protocols for is to give the new console the ability to run all the latest USB, NAND, GPU, and CPU bandwidth speeds at their max potential. Case in point on this is now, NVMe SSD manufacturers are making their new SSDs PCIe 4.0 compatible for motherboards that support it. And other companies have already added support for PCIe 4.0 as well, which Intel just announced recently themselves. And as we talked about in my last video, with Nintendo either needing now to go with 2 gigabytes per second read speeds of EUFS 3.0 or an embedded NVMe SSD solution for the new Switch in order for it to secure next gen ports a lot easier, you might start to see exactly how important and imperative Nintendo saw it perhaps years ago during R&D development of this new console, how upgrading to a new PCIe protocol to connect new NAND storage to the new SOC's GPU and CPU and all the ports like USB-C, USB 3.0 and microSD would greatly benefit from then going into the next generation in 2020 with the rest of the industry. Now in terms of graphics expansion, new PCIe protocols would also be needed if Nintendo were to make the new Switch Thunderbolt compatible and adding a connector through a new Switch dock that has a GPU installed on it from its USB-C port in the future. See how Thunderbolt 3 brings lightning speed and performance to USB-C, creating one compact port that delivers the fastest, most versatile connection to any dock, display, or data device. Enjoy superhero speed. At 40 gigabits per second, it's the fastest port available on a computer today. Get eight times the data and four times the video bandwidth. However, another interesting point to bring out on that is that by the end of 2020, guys, the new USB 4.0 will be getting used in new devices, and reports are that USB 4.0 is just as fast as Thunderbolt with up to 5 gigabytes per second read speeds. So with that in mind, Nintendo may want to install a USB 4.0 slot in either this new Switch or simply wait for another upgraded Switch down the line to do GPU expansion in 2023 or 2024 for example, but the possibility is there that they could do this with Thunderbolt on this new Switch that is soon to be announced as well. It's just been really cool to see how this new piece of hardware has been in development for years now and how Nintendo has been implementing the drivers needed to this system to finally announce and release it. And in order for it to all work in unison together using the latest PCIe protocols as we've seen here, this is very much needed for Nintendo. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button, discuss in the comment section, and subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.